Here we are with Rafael Sanzio's Drapery of Horrors and Other Studies. It's a pen and brown ink over black chalk, a modest size drawing, 13 and a half inches by 9 and a half inches. And here we're going to be studying the muscles and bony landmarks from the anterior front aspect. The two lower hands in Raphael's drawing are in position of hyperextension, also called dorsal flexion, of the wrist and fingers extended. The bony and muscular eminences that make up this anterior or volar hand are readily distinguishable. The bones of the hand are arranged in a series of arches. The carpal or proximal transverse arch, number one, which follows the distal carpal row beneath, the very flexible metacarpal or distal transverse arch, number two, along the line of the metacarpal heads, and the longitudinal arch from points three to nine, along the direction of the median crease of the palm. The intrinsic or short muscles of the hand divide into the masses of the thenar eminence, number four, at the base of the thumb. The hypothenar eminence, number five, below the little finger, and the interosse or, and uh, lumbricals, which lie beneath the palmar fascia, number six, and between the carpal bones in the body of the hand. The action of the muscular masses upon the thumb and fingers, known collectively as digits, cause the flexion wrinkles on the hand used in palmistry. These lines follow the contour of the palm. Raphael's represented the two lines most dominant, the thenar, or lifeline, number seven, and the more distal line of the fingers, or heart line, number eight. In the center, he shows the median crease, points nine through three, called the career line in palmistry, which begin just inward of the bump of the scaphoid appendage, number 10, and contours down over the palm, pointing to the middle finger, number 11, approximating the center line of the hand. The middle finger comes off at right angles to the carpal arch, number one. Opposite the scaphoid, on the ulnar side of the hand, the bump of the pistiform bone, number 12, marks the base or heel of the hand, and above the thenar eminence, number four, the styloid of the radius, number 13, clues us to the lateral border of the wrist. If the ring finger and the little fingers in this drawing were extended with the other fingers, they would all be unequal in length. The middle finger, number 11, is the longest, and then the ring finger is the next longest, the index or forefinger is the third closest in length, and then the little finger is the shortest. When the fingers are partially flexed together, their tips form a straight line. When they are fully flexed, they touch the palm at the palmar crease, which in palmistry is known as the headline, and this lies between the thenar, number seven, lifeline, and the distal, number eight, or heartline creases.